perceived rivalry between traditional banks and fintechs uh, i'll come to you doctor this morning right uh, I, I don't know what your position is on this topic but do you think that there is indeed any rivalry at all right uh, as you know we are all uh, involved in conventional banking until we have uh, a, a digital uh, platform to actually bank our money and spend our money and collect our money because it's a function that is cover everything but i think the major thing we should look at is regulatory gap you know when an innovation comes it attract attention and when you attract at, uh, attention is there it also bring about regulatory so we have not yet in a regulatory uh, technology which we call rich tech however you know you agree with me that the contribution of fintech to nigeria economy cannot be uh, uh overemphasized because it brings a whole lot uh solution to nigeria but uh, looking at conventional banks as well they have been uh taking uh will i say taking advantage of where they are not looking at so if you ask me i think uh, the fintech is having it because we have now 217 functional fintech creating solution for nigeria if i taking us to silicon valley and in africa we have kenya we have south africa and we have our uh, nigeria nigeria is taking the the lead so if you look at virtually if you look at atm let's give us ourselves a particular example look at how many people access atm like before everybody will go online send their money if you if, if, if you look at the trajectory the atm is no diving if our bank itself is not even f i mean servicing ATM as supposed to be because of the uh, fintech. So I think it's a place to co exist for the fintech and the conventional uh, bank. But I must tell you, the fintech is taking the advantage beyond conventional bank. Conventional bank is looking at regulatory gap. I can tell you there is a confusion. CBN is uh, taking uh, some role on uh, fintech. SEC is taking uh, some role. NITDA is taking some role you will also remember loan sharks fccpc is also bringing out some frame from i think there's a regulatory gap that we must take care of so as to have a better uh fintech in nigeria now i'll come to you mr Olamilekon. do mm -hmm. you think that both can coexist or should there still be need for a healthy competition or rivalry we can't rule out LD competition and we can also rule out the competition we can also not rule out the monopoly of the entire system but just like what the uh, doctor has said, so regulation has become a challenge within the up of this fintech uh, commercial bank uh, activities. But for me, we can have a collaboration. After all, most of the activities of the commercial bank are what some of the fintech are also trying as much as possible to take over. And some of the activities of the fintech themselves are what the commercial bank are experimenting. So we can have a collaborative in terms of how they can function, how they can operate, and how they can carry out their uh, and ensure financial stability in Nigeria. But regulation is key. And the doctor forget to mention another key regulator that is in the chain of uh, of this value chain of this fintech activity, NCC. And that's where I have issue. Who is providing this network provision for both banks, commercial banks and fintech is NCC. So when need that come need that give regulation on terms of a uh, kind of a technology we want to use, NCC is the core regulator. So the if these five or six of them don't come together to have an harmonization on what and how our uh, 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 banking operation in, in line with online banking and the rest of them can operate definitely we're going to be facing this uh, challenges we are having but one thing we must not realize is competition and monopoly of the system can happen at any time particularly with the recapitalization of banks that we are talking about in recent time and with the issue of major and acquisition it can happen so we cannot let all this happening within the financial sector of nigeria now for most of our viewers at home who would be listening in and following mm -hmm. this conversation the worry for them is when fintechs are seen to be disrupting what traditional banks do and they always say tied to the network challenges you've talked about the role of the ncc mm -hmm. now when it happens in that stance that fintechs now become disruptive of traditional banking systems in regards to transactions receiving sending money or even collecting money how do these regulations that are supposed to be in place hold them accountable right i i, I think uh, what i think government should do they should establish another regulatory body because if you look at it now about six of them there are some mm -hmm. cases that you wouldn't even know where to take the case mm -hmm. so, so i think there should be a separate because you know beyond banking mm -hmm. fintech also 
are also player in insurance mm -hmm. uh, industry, mm -hmm. in a pension industry. Mm -hmm. So there should be a, a, a one-stop shop for all the fintech-related financial fintech, so to say. Mm -hmm. So and that would have gathered all of them and regulate uh, them appropriately. But in terms of, uh, you know, we they are also susceptible. That's what we must also look at, mm -hmm. and that's part of why uh, the they are saying that there should be zero 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 zero, zero point zero zero five mm -hmm. cyber whatever because mm -hmm. I can tell you all these fintech are also being attacked, mm -hmm. serious attack. If I if they tell you what they are going through, Nigerians will not want to mm -hmm. bank in their banks. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, there should be a regulatory body that will take care of all because it's an imagined area. Mm -hmm. An imagined area, the problem is that there's always a lacuna. And what do I mean by lacuna? There's a regulatory gap. It's going to be there. It's natural. Because people will bring innovation. Innovation will bring a gap. And people will take it. And I must tell you, even in business, I won't call it legal robbery. Mm -hmm. People won't take advantage of what is not governed mm -hmm. to really make some advance. So I think government must come up with a, another agency that will take care. Because I must tell you, CBN is doing a lot already. Right. In terms of... Uh, and they must also face their core monetary policy mm. because if i also tell them that they should also bring technology into what they are mm. facing sometimes it's bring uh you know contradiction to what they actually are uh, then for ncc which are the core like you rightly said i must tell you that there's also a game between fintech and ncc which is going to like kill the uh conventional banks i can tell you if you remember if you remember now there's a rule that said no fintechs you onboard new customer mm. because of kyc and aml yes. mm -hmm. so there's a regulation something uh, like that but the thing is that if you look at it now most telecommunication companies are also having their own financial institution and i think government should discourage it because by the time they also have uh, their own they tend to serve their own better mm. i can mention an online bank like three that can be more faster than conventional in Bank. terms of transferring, in terms money. Of transferring yeah. money even collecting money even mm -hmm. functionality mm -hmm. because they have relationship with this uh telecos and this telco service them better but i can tell you if you ussd or any other platform on command on i can tell you as that today a week ago i transferred money from a particular from access bank to jtb up to now i wouldn't know if it has get to the person or if it is hanging today as i'm leaving i'm going to go to that bank but, but i thought cbn had a rule on the number of days that allowed for such transactions exactly. how do we find a way to balance this while holding the financial institutions accountable mm -hmm. based on cbn regulation this goes back to ncc rules in all these channeling terms that we are seeing uh, we just like yes he, he, he explained his experience many of us have experienced that with all their fintech or the traditional bank in terms of you transfer money it takes numbers of days they will give you 24 hours then they will not give you a maximum of seven days before the money will be retracted back to you but the challenge still boils down to network provider you can also remember there is also the challenge between the commercial banks and the fintech in terms of what they are owing each other yes. there was a time the president of a uh, uh, association of uh, network provider came up and said that the banks are owing the billions of naira that they're going to suspend of uh, providing services to them yes that boils down to that so if a particular commercial bank is owing too much on a particular network provider definitely they will be doing a limited access in terms of how their transaction will be passing or they may also cause problems to them so they can discover people banking with those kind of banks so we just need to call for uh, uh, an authentic authentication in terms of how we can harmonize the relationship if you are owing make sure you pay back what you are paying and provide quality service to the commercial bank because most nigerians depend on commercial banks Although the fintech is taking the urban center uh, customer out of the commercial banks, but the rural areas, majority of them still hold on to the commercial banks or traditional banks. The fact just means that banks depends on telecos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nothing bank can do without the telecos. So regulatory bodies must also look into that and make sure they put tele um, um, ACC and telecos to their size. If mm -hmm. not, they can frustrate banking process in Nigeria because the mm. infrastructure is what the banks are uh, actually uh, relied on. Exactly. If you want to transfer, mm -hmm. you need internet. If you want to do SSD, mm -hmm. you know, SSD does not need uh, internet, internet, but it also relies on telecom yeah, communication. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So these are the problems. So we must look at that because and most telecoms are establishing their bank. Mm -hmm. It starts with uh, the first one. 
you know that came to the or the second one rather they have their banks mm. you can if you go to their office now there's an atm mm. you can transfer in there so what are they doing is banking service mm -hmm. so they should either monitor their telecos mm. or make sure they separate their bank from the telecos because now i can tell you there's some there's a particular online bank now if you transfer now after i can tell you that since i've been using it, there is no fail, network failure mm -hmm. ever before i say it doesn't have special relationship with these people mm. which is allow if they can pay for it but mm. it shouldn't be at expense of, of the, co of the commercial mean. banks mm -hmm. now we have about 30 commercial banks right mm -hmm. there about mm -hmm. and we have 217 uh, fintech. Fintech. do you know what that simply means that means this disruption has come to stay except those banks now go and establish their own fintech fintech and do you see what i'm saying just the way banks also have subsidiary exactly. it will not be their subsidiary because exactly. even if they cannot compete favorably and that's that is what we should look at and even let's look at the sum of amount that is going through fintech mm. and the one that is going through commercial there could be limits mm. on fintech but i can tell you the frequency mm. of it you know me and you now how many which what would takes you to bank if not something serious mm. if not for the fact that i my money i transferred i couldn't i didn't know if it get to the person or what mm. I, what would i go to do in the four wall mm. banking all i would have loved to do everything and you know all this fintech also online you just said to this i remember from one international television they had to like interview me on one of the uh foreign fintech if i can tell you the foreign fintech and is doing very very well if, uh, by the time i do my analysis see the sum of amount that is passing through mm -hmm. that process you know that a lot of money is passing through fintech trillions of naira compared to commercial banks. so i think there must be a regulatory framework that will give a healthy like you said competition they must coexist and i i think government should do it to favor more commercial banks more because they need infrastructure mm -hmm. but a fintech does not need any infrastructure mm. you only rely on telecoms and they can be in one room mm -hmm. and assess and do their thing but a commercial bank is in 36 states of nigeria mm -hmm. you know is you know have a lot of employees mm -hmm. have a lot of you know it's a serious thing that commercial banks need to be rescued and now we have they have said that they should uh, recapital Mm -hmm. we'll come to that in a bit and uh, let, let's carry our viewers at home along too mm -hmm. now in the nigerian perspective the nigerian interbank settlement system plc nbbs has also been called into question because it says its core mandate is to improve banking services in nigeria and in the few days we're also looking at some of the infographics greeting your screen they've said that the nigerian fintech system ecosystem is largely hinged on the NIBBS. Now, and you'll find more of this infographics greeting your screen as we look at the core mandate of the NBSS says improving the Nigerian payment system. Mm -hmm. Well, in the next couple of slides, you, you see the, the diagram where it almost feels as though the entire structure of Nigerian fintechs are resting on the shoulders of the NBBIS. And in all other tweets with reactions to this, you'd find Nigerians joining the conversation. Uh, Momo, uh, who posted this tweet says the overdependence on NIBSS is what I do not get. The moment it gets down, the entire banking system of the country is on halt. Surely there are better ways. Mm. He also goes on to put this diagram to depict his point. Mm. Right. I think uh, it's an infrastructure that we mm. must work on. But not only NIBB, NIB, I mean, it's not only fintech that actually uses platform. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. the commercial mm -hmm. banks. commercial mm -hmm. banks also use, and it's normal. In fact, it's only in Nigeria. I can tell you, we need to appreciate this NIB access. It's only in Nigeria you transfer money. The next person saw it immediately. Mm -hmm. If you go to other climb, it takes some hours before they will get to to see it. So the only thing is that we need to expand this infrastructure mm -hmm. to really cater to a lot of needs because you know we never uh, over uh, maybe think we'll get to this level that majority of Nigeria will prefer to do online mm -hmm. uh, banking mm -hmm. you know so i don't i only think there is need to strengthen them the more there's no need to duplicate it just strengthen and bring it about more uh more infrastructure although what many people are calling for is to decentralize the nib structure in a way that it can have just like you really pointed initially we have a regulation that can take care of all of them now up for fintech the structure for fintech they add for traditional bank but what i understand by nib it has been a long years of building because it started from the 
from the manual processes of going to banks, filling your name, and it is the data of Nigerians that NIBB is working with that the commercial bank owns, uh, which CBN also controls. NIB is a subsidiary of Central Bank of Nigeria, but the board of directors are majorly management of uh, all the commercial banks Bank. in Nigeria. So I don't know whether they have absorbed the fintech management also into the NIBBS. But going forward, just like Doctor said, is to make sure that we strengthen it, but to make it more buoyant, more more serious in terms of the structure. Could be, be the, okay. Can we decentralize it, or we make it compact, more stronger than the level that it is currently? Now let's revisit uh, some more tweets coming in on the show this morning at Trending X on its verified handle. It is also made in terms of a light reference to the national greed. It says NIBSS is trending because it is down. What is NIBSS? Simply, let's just say it is like the national greed. But for banks, when it goes down, no transfer can successfully go through in the whole Nigeria. The entire national digital financial network depends on it. Nigerian Interbanking Settlement System, PLC, is an industry-owned firm that develops and handles the infrastructure of payments between different banks in Nigeria. It is owned by all licensed banks in the country, including the CBN. It goes on to list CUDA. OPE, Access Bank, GT Bank, Money Point, every bank depends on NIBSS. Even Piggy Vest is usually affected. Now, some Nigerians responding to this in a separate uh, slide of tweets, starting with Flaws at the underscore Florence says, NIBSS don't turn national greed. Now, every three market days now, <laughs> she sighs. Uh, we have Fabian at the first says, NIBSS, please, I am on my knees. There are also other Nigerians reacting to this and trying to make a case for some of their failed transactions not going through. But uh, with good thanks to Trending EX, having explained to Nigerians with the similarity to the national grid so that our viewers at home can understand mm -hmm. how much of a role the NIBSS plays mm -hmm. in ensuring we have smooth transactions. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's also been the drive largely to transition Nigeria to a cashless economy mm -hmm. and more fintechs have been called on board to bring about that dream and also in our bid to squeeze liquidity which is part of the roles the CBN is using to fight inflation now. Do you think that the overall goal to transition to technological driven banking processes is somewhat a reality despite these challenges we're facing at us now? Well, I must say, uh, acknowledge that Nigeria, in terms of uh, uh, digital platform usage, I can tell you we have performed exceedingly well because I don't know who uh, are among us who pay school fee through cash these days. Mm -hmm. I don't know who will subscribe to his uh, uh, cable TV through cash. It's pretty mm -hmm. difficult. I think exactly. we have, in terms of uh, moving to online banking, we have actually achieved uh, that because nowhere again in the world that you say everything should be online you still mm -hmm. need some element of uh, some level of uh, cash to mm -hmm. even the economy also need mm -hmm. cash mm -hmm. in people's hand mm -hmm. so as to really make it uh, flourish at least to help the macro uh, economy so for me i think in terms of uh, financial inclusion we have done well mm -hmm. online banking and just done well. in fact mm -hmm. it may as a it may feel as past CBN governor, I must tell you, if there's anything that does not, he does, and he tried in that area, <laughs> this online banking, banking, I can tell you, <laughs> it did practically. In fact, this CBN governor has jettisoned some of his plan. Definitely. Is it Naira? Naira. He has jettisoned in Naira. There is even a Wangu too that is coming yes, up. Uh, there was supposed to be a card. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, uh, this is the NIBBS card. Yes, there's supposed to be a card mm -hmm. that he yeah, is about to even launch. Exactly, it's ready. Exactly. He has given you the date to launch. Exactly. I don't know why this card also abandon that mm -hmm. in era is abandoned mm -hmm. because even era is there even all this crypto or what have you would have have you know there's a way it would have been you know bring it bring about that bring it that and up to now you still don't have regulation for crypto you're mm -hmm. only being reactive mm -hmm. not pro action and that's why we must have those uh, regulatory framework get get to add to his I definitely comments. you know a doctor just spoke my mind i did an article on the niba that kango card that he talked about Quite elaborate uh, card that we Nigeria need to have, and it was through that structure. You know, when I said it was through our uh, many years of a uh, manual banking system that brought about the NIBBS, whereby they, they have addressed the majority of Nigerians' uh, data. Because it was the data the NIBBS is working with when you are doing all those transactions. So it was now opportunity for the NIBBS. So now it's okay, this cashless policy, we are going to have a unified card. 
the Nigerians can own, either you are an in interior part of the country, so that you can use it. It doesn't matter the banks that you belong. So far, you have that card, you can use that bank to collect money, transfer money to anywhere. That's what they were doing. But maybe because of uh, the, the, the the intention of the currency be going on, I say his policy is just three: price stability, financial stability, and avoidance of you doing any quasi intervention. Because on the part of the currency being governor, anything that go that that is outside this initial two policy uh, you want to embark on price stability financial stability it becomes quasi intervention like the one of nibbs to him it's a quasi but they are, they are under it's <laughs> under <laughs> it because all of us depends mm -hmm. on card exactly. remember we need to international card mm -hmm. they, we have their names exactly. now those are the only pay point, point card if exactly. you want to do any dollar mm -hmm. transaction mm -hmm. you must just, but if we have in and that awango uh -huh. It will it solve the problem. problem, and and the pressure mm -hmm. even on dollar, dollar. would mm -hmm. have reduced. Because because all exactly. of us need dollar exactly. to operate exactly. now. Exactly. But if we don't, if we have that card, mm -hmm. it can convert your nera mm -hmm. to dollar, to dollar. and you operate. And you, you are in your way, you do whatever. And you also remember the issue about domiciliary account that was generating a lot of problems. It was solutions to those ash issues. That's why this Awango NYBBS card came up, and although we will need to advocate that more, but also look at this policy. Look at this policy. It's not a quasi intervention from SIM. It was a monetary effective policy to help us look at some of the challenges that we are having. Doctor said something about uh, what do you call it? Uh, this guy is playing on a uh, crypto and the rest of it. It was uh, as a result of that they brought in era. Although in era was to develop after three years to be able to meet up with the blockchain technology issues. Although we started with the way of making sure it becomes a local transaction, buy year and sell year get something online then later there's a transition to now move to that level where you cannot do normal transaction like what they are doing in crypto in in era maybe we need to advocate for that so oh, can it okay. can you take a look at this policy plan of the monetary policy of this i mean mm -hmm. at that time because it is important that we look back and take the good one that we invested in it that's the thing and it's fair government yeah. investment now the challenge on this is mm. the statement that government is a continuum right in, in practical terms mm. it would mean that the projects that are adoptable mm. from the previous administration mm. under uh, godwin amefiele mm -hmm. can still be consolidated upon by the current CBN that is government. why some of us call buhari very well you know why in some areas all the project of jonathan was taken over by Buhari and Buhari make sure he completed it. Go and check. And that's the kind of thing we want. So now in this case we agree that there are some quasi mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. measure mm -hmm. intervention which I also against. We have Bank of Industry. Mm -hmm. We have Bank of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. Why we see them go and do and mm -hmm. Why we go and start say uh, one this thing they have a nine post uh, exactly. uh, 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 nice you know all those things you don't need it just do your own but this one is a core monetary for policy. policy yes mm -hmm. that you have a unified card and you have in era this mm -hmm. would have solved a lot of problem by now so sometimes you don't just jettison all mm -hmm. you know like now he's sacking every director you know most of sacking people we don't say he didn't sack but you just have to be objective mm -hmm. about because government is a continuum you will go someday another person will also come, come on board so when you have policy open it dust it is this good to continue is this bad to continue you can't say every policy the, your predecessor has done is bad remember you are only an appointee mm -hmm. we see how people that are going to be in cbn for the next 20 30 years exactly. and they are employees they are employees, they are employees. Yeah. so they will be there so you, yeah, you must find a way to come so i think government are presenting we need to look into this area and encourage Caduso and the Minister of the Economy to look into the, those policy and pick the, the one that uh, will benefit Nigeria. Especially the e era and the NIBBS card is very, very important. We are seeing it on this platform that Caduso take a look. If any of his members in the communication department of CBN is watching us, listening to us, to go back to e era. I know it has over 15 years plan and it was concerted to a particular foreign country, I mean foreign firm that did a structure around it that it will transit from the normal domestic buying and selling that we know it like the one that some of these online uh, trading stuff normally do to not transit to that blockchain technology and they spent a lot of money doctor made a mention of that they spent a lot of money uh, on that platform beyond that we all pay through this that platform now hmm. so why are we not using our own platform hmm. in fact my advocacy then was that since we have about 10 million civil servants mm -hmm. pay them through in era 
they will also pay mm -hmm. through in era yeah. out. out do you see the multiplier okay. effect of that on the economy mm. that means me and you will have to go there by force because yeah. somebody transfer mm -hmm. the only way you can collect go and download the download the, the app you also transfer the money to the next person before mm. you know it will be domesticated mm. and it will show in our transaction and it will reflect in the economy now once we look at bringing a balance between fintechs and traditional banks this oh. is another salient point on the policies of the CBN to fight inflation. Mm. Now there's been a liquidity squeeze that has also further put pressure on, tra on, on traditional banks mm. amidst this recapitalization plan. Mm. Besides this introduction of ENARA, are there other uh, alternatives that the CBN can use in terms of tackling the current rate of inflation? Right, I think the policy of this current MPR, you know, uh, um, uh, MPC rather, mm -hmm. the uh, the, our aim is to bring down inflation mm -hmm. while the jettisoning growth of the economy. Mm -hmm. yes, it's a yes. serious contradiction mm -hmm. because you have to take continue to value the the two. Now, for me, NPR should tarry. Don't increase this beyond this again because it has proven that it's not solving the the problem. Mm. Three consecutive times, time. two hundred basis, four hundred basis, mm -hmm. and two hundred basis. Mm -hmm. We have not seen the the, the solution. Mm -hmm. So now. And I can tell you, traditional banking are also having issues. Mm -hmm. You know why? People are not going there to borrow again mm -hmm. because interest rate is very, very high. high. Mm -hmm. And what is the business? Remember, before we used to have bank in Abuja, mm -hmm. Unity Bank and Mongoda Bank. But because of TSA, mm -hmm. there was no government fund mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. They all moved to Broad Street mm -hmm. in Lagos. The only business they should do is to borrow, give people loan and take profit from it. They are not saying you are reducing their liquidity liquidity mm -hmm. you know you're also saying they should not uh but uh, yeah by style you're also reducing their power to give out money look at what happened to heritage bank mm -hmm. you know these are the key things we have to do. what actually happened to heritage bank is bad loan mm -hmm. and what bring about bad loan i can tell you most businessmen prefer you come and seize their facility than to pay the money they borrow from you Definitely. you know why as at the time I borrow money from you, inflation dollar was, was yes, yeah. dollar was, was two hundred. In fact, it was, was two something, mm -hmm. five hundred. You say I should come and pay back at one around five, one thousand five hundred percent. A rational businessman would never do that. You say, in fact, I can tell you one of the companies I also check very well. You know what? They have seized the property in Lagos, in Abuja, and in Kano. He said the lawyer said go with the property gentlemen the money you're supposed to pay them go and invest they have gone to ghana hmm. because how can you say i borrow 50 million as at last three years i said come and pay 400 million hmm. now a rational person so, and that's what caused heritage bank problem mm -hmm. because heritage bank have have bad loans and trust a big man you say come and arrest me we go to court then we the, the, the case continues these are the things because i'm saying this because i actually research for heritage bank mm -hmm. so it's a serious issue so if care is not taking other banks we still have the same challenge challenge mm -hmm. I, you know I, I'm, I'm so happy that dr min mentioned of non-performing bank loans that is the genesis of the challenge we have in terms of this npr npc i upstick most times from 150 to 200 boy point to 300 whatever level they want to put it fighting inflation will not come with just a singular monetary policy like that it has to be married with the fiscal policy although the currency being have recognized that the fiscal policy or fiscal authority must take charge but the other thing we also need to look at is also our trade policy how are we going to marry the three together so that we can really fight this inflation from three angles not from the singular angle of just monetary policy that cbn has been pinpointing but for the bank uh, poor, poor performance of loans from the bank the cbn need to tighten is restriction i mean regulation on banks why are you giving money to people that are mostly political uh, businessmen that will collect money when it is two years or three years to election period we need to look at that it is heritage bank today it almost happened to us uh, the, uh, the former intercontinental bank before it became access bank many people didn't know that it was as a result of political portfolio individual went to collect non money from those banks who claim that they want to access some government facilities in advance and they now return their money back and that's what caused the problems of the bank. And they also, in terms of looking forward for the capitalization, CBN is very serious about this. We just hope that with the regulation, they are breaking into you know, smaller, smaller portions so that people can understand the banks in Nigeria can be stable as Cardoso promises us, as well as price stability and full employment. These are his promises. 
I'm not a campaign officer, but these are the things he told us. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> is there full employment in America? It's not possible. So after these someone are, now these are saying, the that after someone now tell you that it's going to have full employment. <laughs> in fact, if there's full employment, it's a problem also. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Well, it's one of those discussions that will be further expanded and for our viewing public would also advise that you visit our web page where we have uh, more infographics delineating the difference between fintechs and traditional banks. From the definition, the technology, the structure, the collateral and its target customers. Now, whilst Nigerians continue to grapple with some of the challenges in being able to carry out online transactions, some of these definitions in terms of how both differ from one another is also hinged on the collateral required. For fintechs, yes. they have very lenient and flexible collateral requirements, while traditional banks have strict collateral requirements. And this has also been one of the challenges mm -hmm. because of the money that it yes. involves. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a, com a commercial bank can even do a loan of 500 million. Mm -hmm. But a fintech does they have, if I sharp, sharp, I call it sharp, sharp loan. Yeah. Sharp, sharp loan. Mm -hmm. So that is a, is a strong difference. Now, in, in closing, our loan repayment uh, culture in Nigeria, mm -hmm. especially with the way inflation has informed the behavior mm -hmm. of some entrepreneur and business mm -hmm. persons mm -hmm. who default on loans, is there any way the government can reduce the ease of doing business indices? to accommodate for a larger moratorium when these loans are repaid or lesser ones in light of the current economic realities? I think the first thing to look at is collateral. Mm -hmm. You know, the collateral will determine the amount of money you are going to borrow. So I recall there was a time we said even your NYC certificate should be enough to borrow money mm -hmm. as, a, as a business, uh, small business person. Mm -hmm. A traditional ruler should be able to stand for you and say, okay, we want to borrow this money. This is the person that is waiting for. Because if you wait for landed collateral, mm -hmm. I can tell you it's a pretty difficult mm -hmm. thing for. Then in terms of loan uh, repayment, I can tell you we don't have the culture of repay. It's not our fault, uh, mm -hmm. our first and foremost. It's because of our the way we are wired mm -hmm. so there's, there's you know you know in business then you must understand business and repair um, let me see your financial record how mm -hmm. many business have good financial good credit scores. good credit mm -hmm. no financial record itself and because it's doi is supposed to say before i borrow your money go and bring your proposal exactly when are you going to pay mm -hmm. when are you going to do this mm -hmm. your gestation period mm -hmm. the moratorium mm -hmm. as well when will it last so mm -hmm. these are the things so when you are, want to give people loan let them also come with that conditionalities when are you going to pay when are you going to break even? These are what we need to do. Very quickly, in less than two minutes, let's take your thoughts as well. The doctor, I've said it all. Those are the things I expected in terms of structural business proposal and the rest of them. But for me, it boils down to, you made mention of something like culture, uh, the way we feel or the way we understand our society. And again, this boils down to when you talk about how can government come in, how can government ensure that there's electricity, there's good rules. Because when you finish collecting all the loans and you finish building your factory and there's no a easy supplier or heavily supply of electricity for you there is no good road what will happen to the loans then we now have to be talking about bad loans then just like what doctor said last time it was here when we discussing said about unsold goods Fancy. well how did we arrive at unsold it's, goods? it's even happening now in lagos you get it a company that is doing part sanitary mm -hmm. part is mm -hmm. saying that the people are not buying, buying again again why it is because the purchasing Can government power patronize some of these private businesses. <laughs> ideally, ideally, we must look at it. Anytime mm -hmm. a company, monetary company, have unsold, government is supposed to buy it mm -hmm. from them because they are going to die. Exactly. So you buy it from them. Mm -hmm. Maybe you take your time mm -hmm. and sell it, or you distribute it. Because mm -hmm. if you don't help those manufacturing sector, mm -hmm. they will be out of business. Exactly. And what is the negative part of out of business is unemployment. Mm -hmm. And what is unemployment? GDP will be very, very low. Mm -hmm. So government must also always look at the long term problem you know and provide immediate solutions well i must thank you gentlemen for your time on the program this mm -hmm. morning as we look to broaden the scope to other financial and economic topics on mm -hmm. our flagship program we appreciate you thank, thank you for having me.